Hey guys, this is Mr. Grace for Algebra Unit 6 Final Exam Review. Today we're going to be talking about properties of exponents. This is going to be broken down into two videos. So here is video number one. Hope you're ready. You got your calculator out? Let's go guys, you're slacking. All right, so properties of exponents. The first one we talked about is multiplication. Say, if I have 2 to the third times 2 squared, what do I do? Well, I'm going to take these exponents up here and we're going to add them together because the bases, the bottom part, are the same. So that turns to 2 and 3 plus 2. Hopefully you're not using your calculator for that. You get 5. And now the next thing to do is to put that into your calculator. Okay, so we have two. If you have a little caret button, sometimes it's a yx button, but that helps you to raise it to a different exponent. Okay, and it's two to the fifth power, which gives us 32. Another way that you could do it is two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, and 16 times two is 32. Okay, now when we have exponents, we're going to do the same thing. So x to the 4th times x to the 12th, it's the same. So when it's the same, we can add them, and we get, oops, x to the 16th. Okay, the next property we talked about is when we're dividing exponents. So I have 2 cubed divided by 2 squared. So when we're dividing, we really subtract. I want to know who wins, the top or the bottom? Where's there more? Well, there's more on the top. How many more? Well, there is one more. And once we're done with that, we want to solve it. 2 to the first power is, hopefully you're saying it, 2. OK, and with exponents, same thing. Who wins, the top or the bottom? Yeah, the bottom wins, and the bottom wins by 1. Well, what's left on the top? If the x is on the bottom, what do we put on the top? A 1. OK. Here's our next one. We have, in parentheses, 5x squared. Oh, I'm sorry, 5x cubed all to the second power. What do we do? Well, remember that we have to distribute this to everything. Like, uh, Mr. Grace, there isn't an exponent for the 5. Yeah, there is. There's a 1. OK? So when we do that, the bases stay the same, but we get new exponents. That turns to 5 squared and x cubed. And the last thing to do is to simplify. Solve that. 5 squared is 25. And we can't do anything with x to the 6th. OK, let's see another example. So if we have 5 over x cubed squared, what do we do then? We do the same thing. We give everything an exponent if it doesn't have one. If it doesn't have one, it's one. And then we distribute, OK? We already know that 5 squared, 5 squared is 25. And then 3 times 2 for the bottom is x to the 6th. All right, two more. So what happens when we have negative exponents? Are we even allowed to have negative exponents? No, you are not allowed to have negative exponents in your answer. OK, so we learned a wrap about this. If your exponent's negative, drop it like it's hot. That's right, bring it down. OK, and when we bring that exponent down, it turns to a positive. OK, and then we put a 1 on the top. So 
So what happens if the exponent's negative on the bottom? Well, if your exponent's negative, drop it like it's hot. If it's already on the bottom, we bring it to the top. And we would say that that is x squared over 1. But do we really need it to say over 1? No, we don't. So there we go. All right, last rule. Our last rule is what happens when our exponent zero? Well, when your exponent zero, your base turns into one. That's it. For exponent zero, your base turns into one, your base turns into one. Okay, even with exponents, whatever your base is, is going to turn into 1. All right, hopefully that wasn't too bad for you. Now let's go into some examples. This is going to be a combination of all of the rules together. If at any time you want to pause the video and try one on yourself, please go ahead and do that. All right, number 1. 2r squared t to the negative 7th times 4r to the 5th t to the 7th. Now there's a bunch of things that you could do. Okay, you could start dropping the negative exponents. Um, you could combine them right away, multiply, you know. What we like to do is we're going to multiply and combine things first and then move any negative exponents. All right, so we have 2 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Last time I checked. Now, we have r squared and r to the fifth, so we add those and get r to the seventh. And then I have t to the negative seventh and t to the positive seventh, and when we combine those, those cancel. So our final answer is 8r to the seventh. All right, number two. I'm going to get you started on number two. All right. Remember that that negative 4 is to the first power, and so is the d. And we want to distribute it. The only thing you got to watch out for is that when we talk about that negative 4, I don't want to lose the negative sign, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. Okay? So why don't you guys pause the video and try the rest of it on your own. Okay, and you should get 16c to the 6th d squared. Remember that negative 4 times negative 4, or negative 4 squared, is positive 16. All right, 3, same thing. Okay, I'm going to give that 2 a 1, and we're going to distribute that to everything. First way we write it is with our new exponents, and then we simplify. So we get 2 to the 5th, 3 times 5 gives us x to the 15th, and 8 times 5 gives us y to the 40th. Okay, we already did 2 to the 5th once today, and that's 32. x to the 15th, y to the 40th. All right, number 4. This is telling us to divide 8 divided by negative 2. Well, 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Now, is that on the top or the bottom? Yeah, that's the top. Now, let's look at the x's. Who wins? Does the top win or the bottom win? Well, who has more? Uh, yeah, guys, the bottom has more. Okay. How many more does the bottom have? Hopefully, you're saying 7. Okay. And there's nothing else we can do, so that's our final answer. All right, number 5. Yeah, dude, we got some negative exponents. So, since there's nothing to combine, when your exponent's negative, we drop it like it's hot. And if it's already on the bottom, we bring it to the top. 
when we rewrite this, the 4 cubed comes out front, the y to the 6th stayed up here, we brought down the 3 cubed, x to the 5th, and then the z squared was already down there. Now, is there anything that we can change? Well, yeah, we can simplify those numbers. 4 cubed, we know what 4 cubed is. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Y to the 6th, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. X to the 5th, Z squared. And that's our final answer. Why don't you try number 6 on your own? And just remember, just because a number is negative doesn't mean we drop it. We only drop negative exponents. Okay? Good luck. Okay, so when you're all done, you should get negative 1 over 3x to the 7th y cubed. So the only thing that dropped down was the x to the negative fourth and the y to the negative fifth. The y to the negative second on the bottom moved to the top. We reduced negative 9 over 27 to get negative one third. You combine the x's to get x to the seventh and the y's, the bottom wins by three. Okay, number seven. Once again, number seven, something, uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. Since we're allowed to use calculators, we're just going to multiply straight across and start combining that way first. So on the top, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And then we get x to the 4th, y to the 5th. And on the bottom, we get 10 times 5, which is 50. How many x's do we have? Yeah, there are four. And then y's, there's only one y. So now that we've done that, let's simplify. Well, Mr. Grice, we got a crazy fraction now. Negative 12 over 50. I don't know what to do. Well, divide it out. Okay. And almost all of your calculators can turn that into a fraction for you. You just got to know how to do it. Okay. So we get negative 6 over 5. Or, I'm sorry, that was 25. What happens with your x's? Yeah, those cancel out. And then who wins with the y's, the top or the bottom? Yeah, the top. And the top wins by 4. So the only thing I'm going to do is make that look a little bit nicer. So negative 6y to the 4th over 25. Okay, number eight. Ugh, what symbol is that in between? Yeah, that's division. And with division, we want to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so we're going to flip this fraction first. And when we flip it, it changes to multiplication. So we have negative 3w cubed x to the fourth all divided by 4w negative 3 x to the seventh and then we flipped it so 2w negative 3 x to the seventh and guys when we're flipping like this it doesn't turn to a uh, positive once we flip it okay so just like in the last one let's kind of multiply everything across first and then see what we have to simplify afterwards so you guys are all on your own Go ahead and pause the video, and good luck. Hopefully you paused it. Did you? You better have. Is that what you got? Well, Mr. Grace, I don't know. Let me see your work. Okay. So when we multiply, we get negative 3 times 2, which gives us negative 6. Okay? Now, the w cubed and the w to the negative cubed, those actually cancel. And then when you combine our x's, we get x to the 11th. 
On the bottom, the denominator, we have 4 times 3, which gives us 12. And the same thing, w to the negative 3 to the, and then to the third, those cancel each other out. And then we have x to the 11th. The x is to the 11th, cross out. And then we simplify negative 6 over 12 to get negative 1 half. Now, that's going to be the end of our first video. If you have any questions, please come see Ms. Kranz or myself. We'd love to help you out. That's why we get paid the big bucks. Otherwise, video number two, if you need to watch it, is going to be all about the word problems and the graphs. All right, this is Mr. Grice signing off for Algebra Semester 2, Unit 6, Final Review. Thanks for watching.